On today's episode a popular Indian dish from Goa for all the spice lovers. This is my version of chicken vindalu where vin is wine vinegar and alho is garlic. Hey everyone, this is Bombi. Namaskar and welcome to Curries with Bombi. Vindalu is a fiery hot and spicy dish. So let's start with the chilies. Since I'm a spice lover, so I've taken four dry Kashmiri red chilies which are milder in terms of heat level. compared to the regular ones but you can use any variety of dry red chilies please use less if you cannot handle the heat i like taking out the seeds or else the dish becomes too overly spicy here i would highly suggest using a pair of gloves while handling chilies today i forgot to do so and in spite of washing my hands several times the spice still lingered on because when i served an apple to my husband He wondered whether I'm sprinkling chili powder nowadays on our fruits as well. Then soak them in hot water for about an hour. After an hour of soaking, this is how they look. So if you compare between one in the dry state and other being soaked, it seems like they go back to their younger beautiful days after being soaked in hot water. Don't they? Okay, so now we will make the vindaloo masala. Though there are many ingredients used but the recipe itself is very very easy I promise In a blender jar add cumin seeds yellow mustard seeds you can even use black mustard seeds instead then coriander seeds black pepper corns Here I have cinnamon stick and a few cloves then green cardamoms These are fenugreek seeds. They have a little bit of bitter taste to them, so add very little, but they give a beautiful flavor. It is totally optional, but please do add it if you have it in your pantry. I like to give everything a coarse grind. After that, add the red chilies. Then garlic. This recipe calls for a lot of garlic. Then ginger. Ginger is optional, but I love adding them. Next, I like to add a little bit of paprika to get the ruby red color and just a tiny pinch of turmeric powder. Then comes the sour note, apple cider vinegar. You can replace it with regular white vinegar or rice wine vinegar or red wine vinegar. Usually more vinegar is used than what I am using, but my family doesn't like it to be too sour. So I add tomatoes which add up to the freshness. Now blend everything. You need a smooth paste like this and your vindalu masala is ready. Next we will be marinating the chicken. I have taken a combination of boneless as well as bone and skinless chicken thighs. I always like using chicken thighs for making curries as they taste so much better. But you can definitely use chicken breast if you have any concerns. Then use 4 to 5 tablespoons of that vindaloo masala and save the rest for later. Mix everything very well and let it marinate for a minimum of 1 hour. The more it marinates, the better it tastes. Keep it in the refrigerator if you are planning to marinate it over an hour and in that case keep the masala as well in the refrigerator. Pan over medium high heat. oil Once the oil starts shimmering add sliced onions add a pinch of salt and stir them on medium high heat initially then lower the heat to medium low once they start getting a little soft Give them a stir from time to time till they reach into a golden brown color Then in goes the gorgeous vindaloo masala. Stir for a few minutes till the masala gets well fried and gives a dry kind of look with the oil doing its own jig all around the sides. Then the marinated chicken enters the scene. Salt. Fry the chicken on high heat along with the masala for about 5 to 6 minutes. After that cover it on very low heat for about 40 minutes. From time to time uncover and give a stir making sure that nothing is sticking to the bottom of the pan. I added a little bit of water after rinsing my blender jar 
as I dislike wasting all that spice goodness. Then I added some sugar to balance the flavor. Please do add some sweetness if you do not have any concerns or else the dish tastes too sour. Cover it and cook till the chicken turns tender. After 40 minutes let's see what's happening in that pan and look at that gorgeousness. I mean I'm literally drooling looking at this deliciousness while recording my voice. And look at that gravy. It is spicy, tangy and too delicious. This goes best with hot steamed rice and if you are able to resist your temptation then I would advise you to serve this next day as it tastes even better in that way. Please do leave a comment as I love reading them and please hit that like button if you enjoyed watching this video. Eat healthy and stay healthy. Bye bye.